Okay, today's rabbit hole will be about mercury. Uh, let me share a screen here. Mercury and selenium and fish. Apparently, uh, and this is something I learned a while ago from a different site, but basically back in the day, there was uh, advice given out that women who are pregnant shouldn't eat fish because it contains mercury and mercury is toxic and therefore it's really bad. Then some work was done on selenium. Um, and I think it might've been Vadim Gladyshev who did this or who, who figured this part out, I'm not sure. But, um, okay, never mind. Here's, a, here's something, Barry and Ralston, 2008. Um, selenium binds mercury which means that it's actually about the ratio of selenium to mercury that's in fish. That's the important part, not the absolute content of mercury. So um, <clears throat> now the entire script is flipped. And if you look under um, should we meet fish during pregnancy, they're like, oh, yeah, they should eat pregnancies. But they say lower in mercury. Um, it, it really doesn't like... It, it is all about the selenium mercury um, ratio. And these, these types of fish, shark, swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish, apparently have a higher selenium or a higher mercury content than selenium. And that's why they're bad. Um, so let's look up, um, what is it? Swordfish, selenium, mercury. Uh, uh, levels of mercury, methyl mercury, and selenium in fish. Um, there is, whoops, trophic level. Okay, that's great. Um, okay. Concentrations and estimated intakes of total mercury, methyl mercury, and selenium. So we have swordfish total mercury is six. Um, selenium is 0.62. So we see a very big difference. We see this is that's weird. What do these bolded things mean? Well, anyway, it looks like these are the ones that you should not be eating. Um, anything where the hmm. These all seem to be higher. That's not good. Then again, selenium, EDI, what is EDI? Oh, estimated intakes. Concentrations, wet weight, estimated intakes. THG, and THG is total mercury, methyl mercury, selenium. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong columns. My bad. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so these are the intakes over here on the right-hand side, and these are the ratios on the left-hand side. So it's 0.22 versus 0 0.05, blah, 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 blah. And we get down here to swordfish, which is at 0.64 mercury versus 0.44 for selenium. Um, so we want this selenium number to be higher than the mercury number in order for it to be uh, safe, I guess. Um, because uh, from a molar ratio, yeah, and the higher the selenium, the, the safer that it would probably be, because I'm sure that it doesn't bind completely one-to-one, -one. like, there'd probably be, like, isolated pockets throughout the fish of, like, unbound mercury, but I think that if you're eating unbound selenium, then eventually they'll meet up, right, in your body somehow. Um, anyway, you want this number on the right to be higher than the number on the left, but for swordfish, it's opposite. Um, tuna is fine. This is fine. This is fine. 
Um, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's okay. Well, where's the, shouldn't they have other examples? Wow. Okay. I mean, is that the only one that they included? I saw shark. What is it? Shark, swordfish, king mackerel, tilefish. We need to find the actual. Um, what is that? Selenium to mercury. Molar ratios and SC benefit values. Swordfish has by far the lowest, but it's still above threshold. That's weird. Um, maybe we read through the paper; it'll make more sense. But this paper doesn't even have all the all the fish that are named to be poorly in it. So we need to find the one that has. Um, like tilefish. I think tilefish are probably like the tilefish, mercury, selenium. Uh, selenium and mercury molar ratios in saltwater fish. How about this one? Just for the complete use in human tables. We're looking for tables. We're looking for something that shows, where are they getting this information from? Like, seriously. Uh, this is Mayo Clinic and they, they should be referencing. Um, oh, great. Haven't they heard of how to reference things? Okay, mm. advice about eating fish and shellfish, fish and pond, uh, nutrition and pregnancy, raw. Um, I do not see anything about mercury selenium um, ratios in fish. It's very possible, so 2021, no, that should be after everyone knew. Like people knew by this point, because I'm pretty sure I learned about it like at least two or three years ago. So it was before the pandemic, at least. Um, kingfish, bluefin, short, um, shortfin, mako. Okay, wait, mean mercury levels. Mako shark has high C, H, G, molar ratio. So they don't even, where's the swordfish? Okay. Seriously, where is the, the there's got to be, um, we'll just throw swordfish, tilefish, mercury, mercury, selenium. Uh, Mercury tail fish. Um, da, 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 da. How much fishery to reduce mercury toxicity? Coordination has an advisory for fish and advice about eating fish. Assumption advice to improve blah, 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 and nursing women. Um, so Wait, here is the one, is it? No, health benefit value of selenium. So swordfish is still a positive, but it's almost like nothing. Like it's, it's a, it's like, and I'm guessing that there's a regional variance. So anything that's close to zero, you could think like based upon the regional variance, um, you might get something that's in, an, in the negative very easily. Whereas if you have something that's like heavily in the positive, it's very hard for the variance between fish to get to the point where it's like terrible. So um, 
So 16 point, 16 point 44 pilot whale, 14.79. Did they mention pilot whale? I mean, nobody eats pilot whale, but uh, I guess that's something, man, we need to find something. Nobody's like, nobody knows this, right? Like this isn't, let's go to science direct and see. Selenium, mercury, tilefish, swordfish. Allow <laughs> index seafood versus risks. Um, let's take a look at this one. Oops. Oh my God. No. What? Why? Wait, where? There we go. All right. All right. Methyl mercury. Um, skip jack. Wait, 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 wait. Pilot wheel, mako shark, swordfish were typically negative inversely with the body weight. Negative should be impaired. However, they should be fused with thresher shark, big eye tuna, skipjack. We're going to assume the function counter asks. Really? It was just like six species? Uh, okay. Where's the where's the graphs? Um the guy. You know, it's nice to see the variation too, I guess. Um in and and mercury. Looks like there's a interesting. So um milligrams mercury mm, selenium selenium deficit or surplus so wait oh this is selenium minus mercury <clears throat> so pilot whale and mako shark were in the negatives swordfish is again almost at zero Thresher shark is close to zero. Um, tuna and skipjack are well out of range of zero. So they're well in the positives. Okay, but seriously, like where is everyone getting their info from? Um, so, selenium, we might as well get grab this one. So like Barry and Ralston. Uh, mercury toxicity and mitigating role of selenium. University of Hawaii. Interesting. Okay. All right, so this is this is clearly like one of the main papers for the evidence trail for this whole thing. Um, uh, no, we're gonna do um, we're gonna do anti-aging. I create a new folder for. Um, reproductive aging. And we're going to throw this in there. Why am I looking this up for aging? Because I am, 
as a side project also working on um, reproductive aging stuff and going to be helping um, uh, Jennifer Garrison, who is awesome, by the way, uh, with with the, I don't know, I was just, she's trying to get a bunch of information on menopause. And I am very interested in germline biology, and that includes oocytes and whatnot. So um, I've agreed to help mercury and selenium, the interaction, and selenium in general apparently is super inter interesting for from an aging perspective because selenium, according to Vadim Gladyshev, has like a thousandfold, the uh, what's it called? A thousandfold better activity for removing antioxidants um, than cysteine based. And we might as well throw this um, seleno -pro proteins. Might as well bring this kind of stuff in, into the fold. So, um, Characterize our five glutathione peroxidases, um, th three thyroidoxin reductases. These, so glutathione is your natural anti uh, re reactive oxygen species um, protective mechanism, as well as thyroidoxin. It, does, it participates in um, redox reactions. So, selenoprotein P is the most common selenoprotein found in plasmas, and blah, blah, blah. blah. So in the shorter C terminal, okay, whatever. Um, so, so vital nutrients, may health effects of less than the other vitals, so proteins. Um, I remember reading something from Vadim that said that he figured out that um, the, where is, Gladyshev, slow proteins, Gladyshev. Mm. I don't think we'll be have access to this, but um, slow proteins. Let's take a look at in Science Direct. Solana proteins. In brain development, no. Um, so what sorry, what he said was that when you're when you're deficient in selenium, all the selenium in your body migrates to the brain for some reason. Uh, you might as well try to search that phrase up. Selenium in the body migrates to the brain. Um, selenium is so important in the brain and brain function during diseases. Granic selenium reaches the central nervous system. Um, protein is highly expressed in the persistence. This is a marker of selenium in the body. Uh, selenium deficient. Selenium, selenium, let's show you selenium migrates to the mind. I remember reading this a really long time ago. What is this? Neural bearers review. Da, 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 da. Con crucial role of selenium containing selenium proteins in the brain and brain function. Dietary selenium needs to reach an effect in the central nervous system to so as possible build a brain barrier. Um, allocation and tract excision with low levels of glutathione peroxidase follows S and supplementation, commonly sex food. Um, Sugar pathways and slow sugars. Several crucial physiological functions in mammals. Um,
sorry. So, okay, okay, here we go. The other hierarchical aspect is connected with the patterns of expression of certain potentially more essential solenoid proteins in certain tissues. First of all, the brain to maintain these important solenoid proteins at a high level, even at selenium deficiency. Um, so maybe it was this one. Effect inhibit hepatocarcinogenesis. Is it a C shortage? So conversely, the production of other selenium proteins from the deprived another C shortage. Uh, okay. Um, selenium in the gut brain axis. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Was this just part of the same paper? But okay, never mind. Um, sorry. Uh, glad to show. Wait, what's that? What did I just click on? Okay, that wasn't the that wasn't what I was looking for. Is this one Nos, Novo Salov? Salov. Uh, protein deficiency at high levels inhibit hepatocarcinogenesis in mice. Someone somewhere discovered that it goes to the brain. We're getting pedantic though. I mean, this isn't even really in, important. What what's important is um, first of all that you can see just how much. Like large body of work has been done on solenoid proteins um, in transgenic mice. Oh, there's Gladyshev. So Novoselov was first author. Induction both trans induced expression, inducing tumor formation correlated data that changes in solenoid protein expression. Depending on type of genotype. What's the benefit? Will not. Um, I mean, we are going down rabbit holes here. That's the title of this video, or it will be. So, mm, 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 mm. I think we're cancer. Um, maybe we can just search for migrate. No. Um, brain. Wow. Central. Nervous system. What? Then how is this the reference for? Okay, let's just actually read through this. Um, Cancer incidence inverse, uh, so cancer. Um, uh, two more for, okay, supplementation results. This isn't where they, this, this isn't, the paper that they discovered that it goes into the brain. <sighs> Let's look at deficiency. Deficiency. I'm sure that it's measured, mentioned. So it's deficiency, suppressed hepatocarcinogenesis, suppressed tumor genesis, achieved still on protein deficiency, is a significant reduction in expression levels. Sensible disease and oxidative stress. Um, catalase. This is sad. Suppressed hepatic tumor formation. Um, this is all about tumor genesis. So they referenced the wrong paper or something. First of all, the brain to maintain the high level of even cell and deficiency. They should have a reference here and they don't. God damn these people. <laughs> okay. 
fine, whatever. We're just gonna leave that for now. Um, and let's, let's, um, so we started with, should women eat fish during pregnancy? Um, now, mercury is toxic. Why is it toxic? Okay, let's let's um let's just think about how to write this out. Um, file. Oops, new blank document. All right. Um. So we're gonna go with should woman eat fish during pregnancy? Should woman eat fish during pregnancy? Uh, is merc Jury, because there's fish in general. Um, let's see here. We'll have a one word answer. The answer is yes. Can or can woman, can woman eat fish during pregnancy? One, one word answer, yes. Then we're gonna have a casual explanation a deeper explanation and a um, explanation for PhDs, right? So the casual explanation will be like a few, like a, like a one paragraph thing of like um, the FDA used to, we need to find it. We need to find where they're, they're um, the, they used to have, okay, so FDA, um, FDA fish pregnancy recommendation, FDA. I'm going to see chart, which makes it easy to shoot them also. Okay. Our lower mercury chart. They so they don't talk about selenium at all. Right. Um Price about eating fish. Okay, so the FDA doesn't understand the selenium thing, uh, nor do they probably care because they're trying to get make it like as simple as possible. And yet, of course, they they make this like complicated looking chart. So they put tilefish as a good choice. Oh, from the Atlantic Ocean. Ah, see, regional differences, they matter. So, and they have more. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven high mercury fish. Now the question is, what is their mercury to selenium ratio? Right, okay, well, but, but this, is, this, is, this is good. So we're gonna save this as um, FDA advice on fish. Okay. And then we're going to, so we're, we don't care about that anymore. We didn't find, oh, oh, maybe they actually cited their stuff. Oh, it's the FDA. Maybe they actually cited stuff. This device of measurement diagram. The, the, check out, wait, what? God damn them. Okay, no, of course not. Why <laughs> Why would the FDA cite this? <laughs> oh. More aggravation. Okay, fine. fine. Jesus Christ. Stupid FDA. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to say casual explanation. The FDA um recommends eating fish that have low amounts of mercury 
However, they do not understand the interaction between, okay. Um, okay, fish. how about this? The deeper explanation will be the selenium mercury interaction. Um, selenium's importance for the brain and central nervous system. Selenium's antioxidant role. So we'll, we'll throw this into the deeper explanation. The casual explanation will just be FDA recommendation. Um, Type of types of bad and good fish. FDA recommendation and link, link to recommendation. Types of bad and good fish. So it's not just so the deeper explanation will be like, hey, they're concerned with mercury, but it's not just about the mercury. It's about the ratio of the two things. Oh. We should include um, the history, history. Um, so history, how, how the narrative flipped over time and the major time, major milestones that occurred. So that means we first have mercury, mercury bad then mercury bad because so selenium good. Then um, because selenium is good and 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 mercury binds selenium. So then we have um, mercury bad don't eat fish. Hmm, how do we how do we how do we put this? Um, we'll say mercury is bad. Fish have mercury. Don't eat fish. Then it's mercury is bad, but it's but selenium is good. Eat fish with high selenium mercury mer, mercury ratio. I guess that's, it's just two objects. Mm, thought it'd be more than that. But anyway, we wanna include the history. Um, so at what points did the narrative, at what point did the narrative flip? And then we'll do explanation for PhDs, which is going to go into Selenium's effects, selenium effects um, on aging, um, selenoproteins. Um, let's see here. Selenium versus cysteine, I think in glutathione. Um, we'll do uh, um, references for the references for the uh, <laughs> references for oh we should put in how much fish oh yeah oh that's that that's good here okay how much of specific fish types um 
types of good and bad fish, how much? So we'll just say the types of good and bad, right, up here in the casual one. The deeper explanation will go into quantities. Quantities, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. Then the, the PhD explanation will go into ranges and selenium, oh, mercury concentrations in various seawater uh, sections, domains, in various seawater sections. So depending on where you get the fish from, it's going to have different types of like amounts of mercury, right? So you might want to see a map. If, like, you know, I, I, that's what a PhD level person would want to see. They would want to see a map of like all the, the, the mercury. Um, they would want to see a map of the the levels of mercury in like all the various seawaters and like where their fish is coming from, right? Because they would be like, oh, I this is this is what really matters. And they're true, they're that'd be correct. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So again, the person in the region, the proteins. Okay. All right, that's that's good. It's not good. There's gonna be there's gonna be more, but we'll references for each. Well, we're obviously gonna reference everything. I should be a little more quiet, to be honest. Okay. Um, and selenium versus cysteine, glutathione, um, selenium migration to the brain. Because that is an interesting fact. That's one of the few things that I really remember about that whole selenium thing. So I think other people will remember as well. Um, and what else? I think that's I think that's it. Um, this doesn't cover during pregnancy. Um, this doesn't cover like standard uh, health micro like microbes like um uh you know whether fish are more susceptible to being like to going bad and stuff like that. So this was for for mercury, but this is for bacteria and viruses, and um. This is da, 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 cooking seafood. That's all this basic stuff, uncooked fish, and then seafood being cooked. Um, we could throw in, so that's the mercury part of it. What about the DHA? So, okay. For first term pregnancy, one word answer yes. Casual explanation. So we'll do we'll do mercury um, as a section. We'll do mercury as a section. Um, we'll do oops shift tab. Tab, shift tab, shift tab. Oh no. Great. No, come on. Oh, stupid formatting. Okay. Okay, we have mercury, we're gonna have bacteria, viruses, and then we're gonna have um, DHA. And we'll say it's possible DHA is good for pregnancy. But, so this is gonna be all for mercury. And then um, for, for DHA, jury is still 
out on with whether dietary DHA is going to help. Talk about how ALA converts to EPA, converts to DHA in the body. So you make small amounts of it um, naturally. Um, I think that that's a good thing for, for the deeper level of explanation. Um, and then for PhDs, we're going to talk about um, uh, DHA evident, evidence for and against pregnancy um, health, uh, how much DHA is required to make a difference. Maybe that can go up in the top. Okay, we'll get there. Okay, so but this is really great. So we have mercury, bacteria, viruses, and DHA. Okay. Um, oh, fish. Okay, so like fish are more susceptible than other foods to to bacteria. To bacteria to going bad to um, harboring harmful bacteria. Furthermore, farmed fish tends to have a lot of parasites um, uh, as compared to as compared to wild fish. I'm pretty sure that that was a thing. Um, versus wild fish parasites. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now the question is. So this is this is the casual level, right? The question really it becomes like which farms where. So so deeper explanation that's DHA for the um that for parasites. Which farms where? What kind of parasites? Um. So the parasites and the D, well, the parasite and the bacteria and viruses portion are not going to um, be as relevant to aging, but DHA may, if there's a non-zero chance that it's relevant to aging. Uh, so this is, this is why people tell you to get omega-3s, I think, is basically it's the DHA. Um, last time I heard, Nobody cares about EPA, but I just had a conversation with somebody who was like hell bent on the idea that EPA is like really important. So I guess the jury's still out on that one, but definitely ALA is super common and you eat it all the time. So there's no, there shouldn't be any problem getting ALA. Um, DHA gets produced very slowly. Uh, I feel like that's the important one. It's a really interesting thing. It looks like a donut uh, for a brain's pregnancy. Um, DHA structure, structure, um, uh, conjecture about, um, conjecture about the purpose of DHA um, still under debate. People don't really know why it's important. They just know that it's, um, uh, seems to be high 
seems to be concentrated again in the brain and central nervous system. Okay. So, um, okay. This is, I think this is, this is a good structure. We'll just we'll flesh this out later. Okay, cool. Um, I think that's going to be it for now. We'll stop there.